Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Well, as you can see, I'm not in the usual spot, but I'm out with Mrs. Fly and this incredible Honda Goldwing. Uh, we're here at the uh, Burford Lodge Hotel in the Cotswolds. We rode up to here yesterday because we're on the start of a brand new tour. We've got the weekend free. We've got one of the hottest days of the year and we're gonna spank this big boy throughout Wales. So stick around, stay tuned if you wanna see how we get on two up touring on the big Honda Goldwing. Okay, so we're almost ready to go. We've loaded the panniers up on the bike. We'll tell you more about the practicality of the bike uh, later on in the trip, because there's a few things we've already found out. But I just want to ask Mrs. Flyer, because we rode up <laughs> here yesterday, it's about 70 miles from home. How did you find your first ride on the Goldwing? Uh, very relaxing. It's like being in an armchair, to be quite honest. Very secure, great. It's an amazing bike, and it's so smooth to ride, yeah, isn't it, as yeah. well? So I think we're in for a big treat. So stick around, stay tuned. We're gonna, this first part of the journey is up through the Cotswolds. We're heading towards Worcester, and then we're out to... Abercrombie. Uh, yeah, eventually, but we're going by somewhere else, but I can't remember Lempster. where it is. Lempster first, that was the one. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll give you a shout, we're on the trip when we've got something to show you. Okay, we are off. What an absolute beast this bike is. And, uh, well, I'll try not to keep saying that because I'm somewhat smitten by this. So, as I say, we're in Burford at the moment, which is in, the, well, on the edge of the Cotswolds, just uh, on the west side of Oxford. We're going to head up to start with through Burford itself somewhere I know well through uh, Harry's garage videos. He lives around here somewhere. So you might recognize uh, this town when I go up here. Lovely part of the world around here. So to start with, we're gonna nip through the Cotswolds, as I say, up towards Worcester and then Lempster. I'll show you uh, anything that crops up that uh, looks good, starting with Burford, because I know that's lovely. And we'll let you know how we get on on this beast. The ride down last night to Burford was about, I oh know it's about 75, 80 miles, something like that. We thought we'd just uh, get an hour's riding out the way. And uh, oh, look at that, stuck behind a white van already. And it was an absolute pleasure. It was a bit of a mad dash to get to the hotel before dark. Uh, we didn't quite make it, so I can report that the uh, headlights on here are absolutely brilliant. And what a perfect bike for two up riding as well. Well, so far, I've not done anything too gnarly. Getting uh, off the gravel frontage of that last hotel was a bit tricky but once this thing is moving it's perfectly balanced anyway this is uh, Burford what we're doing uh, something like four miles an hour perfectly balanced I can't even tell I got Mrs. Flower on the back it's brilliant I've got the sat nav on here programmed up and it comes out the uh, speakers so uh, if you hear a noise every now and then that's what that's about works really well the controls on here are just amazing and all quite intuitive, I'm glad to say. You can uh, do things like program the sat nav using this big knob, which is like a joystick and a twister and an enter. So that's dead easy how that operates. And it's replicated over here as well on this little enter button and this keypad. Hello, sir. So that all works really well. The only thing so far we have found about the bike that was a little bit surprising is that the panniers aren't quite as big as you'd expect on a Goldwing. The top box is great at the back, or the boot. But you can't actually fit that much in the panniers. We've got enough for our three nights away but uh, yeah you can't be over the top with it if you're going away for a couple of weeks touring Europe I don't know how you get on you'd have to pack very light anyway so that was Burford I'll speak to you when we're on a little way so the hotel we stayed in last night was uh, called the Burford Lodge it's just on the outskirts of Burford and one of the reasons why I stayed there was because they had a garage so I could uh, store the bike nice and securely took a snap to show you and uh, yeah so that was excellent so I didn't have any worries about the security of the bike so I used booking.com, found um, some accommodation, there's loads of accommodation in Burford, but that was the only one that had properly secure parking that I could find anyway. And it was really, really good. I had a cracking breakfast there. Uh, we we're completely filled up. It'll do us until supper. And uh, I even took a snap of the breakfast, which I don't do often, but I thought you might want to see it. And uh, anyway, the whole, overall, that was 90 quid. So I'm going to try and give you some details of the places we're stopping at. Lots of people have asked me that before on these UK tours. So I thought 90 quid for two, including breakfast, pretty good, plus secure parking. Not everywhere we're staying has secure parking. So I've come armed with um, some security bits and pieces, a cover and my light lock. And I'll show you those in operation when we need to use them. I'm hoping this bike uh, works out all right vlogging wise, because it's obviously got this big screen, which is probably right in your eye line. And I know when I was doing my tour of Slovenia, I had so many people complain that uh, they couldn't see through the screen. So sorry about that. Uh, on the faster roads, what I've been doing is uh, just popping the screen up like that. That for you will no doubt be even worse. But for me, it's like an air brake and a barn door. It just keeps all the air off of me. And where we were doing <coughs> fairly fast speeds down the motorway yesterday, uh, that was absolutely brilliant. I was visor up the whole way yesterday and it was evening time. Uh, no flies in the face and it was, you know, completely in my famous bubble of calm. It was absolutely brilliant. All right, so we're, in terms of route planning, 
Um, all I've basically done is for each of the days, I've worked out that I want to do a few hundred miles. So I don't, I don't want to make this a tour really grueling. I want to be able to stop, take photographs, put the drone up, that sort of thing. So uh, I've just planned what major towns we're going to, and in the sat nav, at the moment I've just put Evesham. Check that the route took us through the Cotswolds. It does. That's good enough for me. So I'm not worrying about individual roads that we go on. At the moment, I'm looking for the A429, and I'm on the A424, which looks like a beautiful road actually. Lots of traffic about here. It's a very uh, popular part of the world, but uh, I'm hoping when we get to Wales, it'll thin out a bit. All right, speak to you a little bit later. I've just turned the uh, camera on because there was an amazing view to our left, which I think was the Vale of Evesham. Unfortunately, as soon as I turned it on, we came into this tree line bit, so you can't see it. That's typical. But, uh, wow, this bike, it's going to be a very gushing video and series, I think, because it's just amazing. It just hums along. I put the screen fully up, as you can see again, because I found myself on that road, which suddenly became traffic free. And it was those lovely sweeping turns with that screen. Uh, up, I can have my visor completely open, and as I say, it's one of the hottest days of the year this year. Recording this middle of August, and it's forecast in the southeast today to be 38 degrees centigrade, which is hot for England. Uh, where we're heading in Wales, it's going to be a much more comfortable sort of 25, 26, I think. So we're heading to the right part of the world. We've just got a light kit on, uh, but I feel just right at the moment. But it is still relatively early. Well, half past ten. We're not exactly early risers. I just think it's going to be an absolutely cracking weekend could be a game changer this bike okay so we're just coming to uh, stow on the wold now and this is an example of where the bike's not so good we've got a long line of traffic and I want to take a left up here but I'm just not feeling completely confident to weave up there on a normal bike I'll be up there but uh, of course <laughs> this big old bike fully laden with a passenger pretty heavy as you can imagine well into the 300 kilograms and uh, not brilliant for filtering, at least not at my level of experience on it yet. But nice low seat height, so actually, uh, I don't want to talk anything up, but it doesn't feel like it's going to go over every time you stop. Like some bikes you do that weigh a lot less. Stow the Wall, I think, is where uh, Jeremy Clarkson lives, isn't he? Lovely little spot. Cracking views out here. We're uh, in that. Uh, we're heading towards Evesham, as I say. We're on the 424 now, and the roads here, even though they've got lots of traffic the scourge of the south of England they're just beautiful roads the surfaces are lovely and the suspension on this bike just eats them up I don't think it's got electronic suspension on this but it has got like what I know is telelever suspension so it's got a like a wishbone at the front which separates the forks from the handlebars so you don't you're not directly connected now some people think that makes the steering feel wishy-washy it just makes a great ride to me if you look down here look you can see the tops of the forks doing their things I hope you can see that them moving around following every bump but the ride itself on the bike is silky, silky smooth. It reminds me very much of my uh, the air suspension on my Range Rover. This bike I describe as the motorcycling equivalent of the Range Rover. If my GS is a Mercedes, this is the Range Rover. You know, the GS is a great bike for touring on, but this is just another level. Mind you, for 30 grand a pop, so it should be. I don't know if you can see it, but my reflection in this truck, look, you can see the indicators are on as like running lights. Uh, all the time, quite a lot of that, looks cool. Oh, I really love this part of the world, it's absolutely beautiful down here. On a day like today, through these tree-lined avenues, really beautiful. And uh, of course, no trip to this part of the world would be complete without a ride down Fish Hill, <laughs> which we're nearly at. So, uh, looking forward to seeing how the Goldwyn gets on on that one. Okay, here we are. 10%, low gear for one and a half miles. So this Fish Hill is famous for having sort of hairpins I think if I remember right they're uh, they're fairly sweepy like this but let's see oh here we go <laughs> oh they're fairly hairpinage I've done a lot worse this is perfect for a bike like this just a shame I'm behind a van and a pickup truck but never mind <laughs> man you do have to lean her over on those tight corners nearly took it a bit on the wide side there I felt Mrs Fly grip on a bit <laughs> Tell you what though, it feels so planted. I don't know if it's because the tyres or just the massive weight of it. When you do lean her over like that, it's very confidence inspiring. It doesn't feel like it's going to go anywhere other than where you're pointing it. Wow, what cracking views here. It's been too long since I did a UK trip. I've been promising myself this year that I was going to get out more on the bike, but of course the whole virus thing killed that. 
So I'm really pleased we've been able to snatch this long weekend away. It's a Friday today, and we're out until late Sunday. And we have just so lucked out with this weather because the forecast is beautiful all weekend, including for Wales, which is pretty, uh, pretty unusual. So all the planets are aligned for a cracking trip. Okay, just a quick update for you. We're on the outskirts of Evesham. Nothing particularly picturesque at this point. We're just going around the edge of it. Uh, I've just put in the next destination of the sat-nav, which is Lempster. Uh, by the time we get there, hopefully the scenery again will start to get nice. So we'll uh, pick up with you a bit later. Well, even though I'm on the gold wing, I'm glad to see that the old uh, white van magnet is still doing its thing. Because I've been stuck behind so many white vans today already. Oh, this Vauxhall, I've been behind it for about the last 10 miles. I'll be glad if he's going to turn off, hopefully. No offence to Hoster Ground Care Limited. I know they've got to do a job, but they're always doing it where I want to be. So, quick update for you. We're just skirting around the edge of Worcester now. I've put uh, Lempster in the sat-nav, or Leominster is the way it's pronounced, or uh, rather not pronounced, but spelled. And uh, it's nicely rooted just around the outside of Worcester, so we don't have to go through the centre of town. Love the noise this engine makes. When you pull away, it sounds like a big old V8. And she did not lean over. Excellent. Fancy new bit of road. You can see the Malvern Hills in the distance. Beautiful up there if you've never been. Okay, so we stopped at a Greg's. Not that we've had one, have we? No. Uh, just at Lempster for a quick, uh, well, comfort break, basically, and a swig of water. So what do you think of it so far? Rubbish. Oh, there we go. I tell you what, this bike in sports mode, absolute animal. We had to do a few overtakes, didn't we? Yeah. You pop it into sports mode, and it's an absolute beast. It is a lovely bit of kit. I mean, it's like a Starship Enterprise. From where I'm stood, if you look at it, it looks like it's as long as a barge, isn't it? But it... Uh, it doesn't handle like a barge, it's an absolute beast. It's it? very comfortable, but I've said that already. So we're at Lempster now, where are we going next? Beweth, isn't it? Yes. So we'll stick Beweth in the sat-nav and uh, we'll find some lunch there, so speak to you soon. Okay, great little refreshment stop there. Next up it's Beweth, so let's get this in the sat-nav, if I can remember how to do it. Hit enter. Uh, let's try that one. Destination input. Address over there. It's pretty intuitive to use this. City name. B. U. Set as new destination. Your route has been calculated. Well, and let's just check. Yeah, that makes sense. Perfect. Please follow the arrow on the display then leaving. Please go straight on and then leave the roundabout at the third exit. Right. We're off. Okay, I'll reverse that wheel shut. I'll uh, just straighten her up and then we'll go out that way, yeah? Right, now I'm going to engage reverse mode, which is uh, that button there. Now I'm behind. That is so handy, that. Just uses the starter motor to allow you to walk the bike back. And just straighten her up before Mrs. Fly gets on. That's, uh, hang on. Right, okay. Somebody's alarm's going off. Okay, happy? Yeah. Right. Let's get this beast back on the road. Engage drive. Nothing around. Right, out of a Greg's without having a sausage roll, whatever next. Just notice the air temperature looked 29 degrees. It's absolutely cooking out here. It may not look that hot, but it's pretty warm. Not that I'm complaining. So that was Lempster. Seemed like a very nice little place. We just came by the end of what looked like the high street. You couldn't drive down it. It was close to traffic bollocks. It looked very picturesque. Must make a note to myself to come back and have a little look around here sometime. So I'm not quite sure where England finishes and Wales starts, but uh, we'll find out because Beweth is definitely in Wales. And Lempster, I'm pretty sure is in England still. I don't know if there'll be a big welcome to Wales sign or whether we'll just notice because it starts saying Araf in the street. 
in the road and all that sort of caper. But we'll find out shortly. Now in case you're following on the map, the road we're on now is the A44 towards Rayada, which is an absolutely cracking road. One thing I did do before I came, I mentioned earlier that I didn't do a planned route in terms of every road we were going to ride on, but I did look at the roads that I thought the sat-nav was likely to take us between these sort of towns that I plotted. And the A44 just looked like a cracking road. I mean, look at this. For this bike, this is just perfect. Nice and wide and sweepy bends with lovely views. Really gorgeous. So this is the village of Pembridge. It said historic black and white village on the signs. I can understand why it's called that. Probably better when it's not under scaffolding, but uh, how lovely is this? Look at these little streets. Wow. What a lovely spot, eh? Gorgeous. That's good, we're losing all the traffic. Yeah. Carol was just saying she could smell a pub, you could smell the crisps and beer wafting out. Takes me back to be childhood when I used to have a cherry aid in the car. Oh, what a lovely spot. Still haven't seen the evidence that we're in Wales, so I'm claiming this one for England. Right, back out onto these absolutely cracking roads around here. Oh, the scenery is getting really nice now. Properly uh, looking a bit more wildernessy, really nice. And we've got to be in Wales soon if we're not already. Nothing yet has told me that we're in Wales, but uh, the sat nav is saying in eight miles there's somewhere called Hunfair Yum something or other, which definitely sounds Welsh to me. So, uh, ah, Border View that place is called, so this must be the border soon. I'm expecting a sign any moment. Stunning views here of like a granite type escarpment on my right. Ah, here we are. A sign of Powys, which I'm sure means Wales in whatever they speak in Wales. Woo! Welcome to Wales. Brilliant. Right, next stop, Bueth. Oh, we're into some proper hills now. The GoPro won't show it, but it's absolutely no problem for the mighty six cylinder 1800cc Honda. If only we didn't have all these cars stuck behind a white van. Good to see that the traditions stay strong in Wales. I can't believe how lucky we are with this weather, absolutely corking. Well, I've been lucky enough to uh, have been to Wales many times in my life. It's a beautiful part of the uh, United Kingdom and a biker's paradise. You cannot go wrong with the roads here. Wherever you go, the roads are just brilliant. It's quite easy to get to, that's what I like about it as well. However, having said that, I've never been here before and it's been 29 degrees. Look at that. Wales is green and lovely because it rains here a lot. Very seldom do you come here in this sort of weather. 29 degrees, eh? Brilliant. I wonder what it's like standing up on this thing. Very windy is the answer. Absolutely amazing views though. Check out these mountains ahead. This is why you come to Wales. Oh, nice to get a bit of draft through the jacket as well. Lovely boyo! Okay, that's the only boyo I'm doing. Oh, there's lovely in it. Magnifique. Look at that. Whoop, took it wide. <laughs> Gotta concentrate, I was enjoying the view too much. I made a complete mess of that turn. Good job there's nothing coming. Concentrate, sir. It's hard though with views like that, look at that. Look at that. Oh, who needs Spain when you got this on your doorstep? Answer, oh, I do, Spain's lovely too, but if you get the weather right, this is hard to beat, isn't it? Okay, quick update for you. We're just uh, about five miles from Bueth Wells now and we've come down this absolutely cracking ride. The last 10 miles or so have all been scenery and roads like this. Really beautiful. You cannot go wrong in Wales. Every road is a winner. My stomach is telling me it's time to stop for uh, a bit of food. So we're going to try and find somewhere in Bueth if we can. Somewhere that's handy to stick the bike, have a bite to eat and drink. 
and then this afternoon we're going to head down uh, towards the Brecon Beacons our stay tonight is going to be in Brecon and to hopefully I might find somewhere that I can get the drone up as well so we'll stick around and stay tuned so we've made it to Bewith just got to find somewhere to park ah there's a car park park up up there go and find us some scran see you yeah cheers oh you can me video there you go picking your glove up excellent see ya Okay, so we made it to Bewith Wells. Uh, found this car park here. Just been chatting to the nice people that own the Panigale over there, actually. A uh, bit of a nutter, but uh, well, no, very nice. <laughs> they were lovely. He's got a wife on the back of a Panigale. Obviously a nut job. <laughs> anyway, we parked the bike here. Uh, we need to just secure it, and then we're going to go and get Asani. So uh, we'll report back shortly. Now I often get asked what I do on tour for security and uh, really we're only going to be eating over there. I can see the bike so I'm not doing much this time. Normally I'd maybe secure the bike a bit better but I've put the uh, trusty light lock on the front. It's just to stop the opportune thief really. The beauty of these light locks as well is it, it is it is light and it will fit in the uh, in the back panniers okay. So, uh, so that's mainly what I'm using on this trip. Oh and while I remember those light locks if you follow the link below uh, I can get you a discount off them as well. So a special link below get your 10% discount on the light lock. Right, well, we've had a splendid lunch here in, uh, where are we? Bewith Wells. Yes. Turned out we end up uh, sharing the table with those nutters I spoke about earlier. Lovely we're, people, anyway. Lovely. They've long since left, but uh, we've just left some debris. I really should have filled it before we started eating. But uh, recommend this cafe. What's it called, Cal? Can you see? The Strand Cafe. The st it's called the Strand Cafe, and you're just opposite the car park over there where we left the bike. So it's dead, dead secure as well. So good stuff. Right, we're now going to jump on the bikes and head towards Landovery. See you on the bike. Are you good? You on? Right, let's get this show back on the road then. Stand up, and there she goes. What a beast. So let drive. We're off. And coming behind us, I hope. Nope, we're all good. You do have to plan your docking slightly in this. Make sure where you put your feet down is nice and flat and that you can get the bike out or wherever you're putting it in, etc. Although that reverse creep mode is brilliant. Okay, well that was a splendid little stop in Bewith Wells. This is the uh, high street of Bewith Wells. Really nice little cafe, as we said. And really hot now. It's saying 30 degrees on the, uh, on the Enterprise's uh, control panel. So it's taken a little bit longer than we anticipated to get here. So we've uh, changed our route slightly on advice of the uh, nutters on the Panigale, <laughs> uh, who were locals, so know what they're doing. And uh, we're going to head down to Landovery, or Landovery now, and then uh, track along uh, the top of the Brecon Beacons to Brecon for our stop tonight. So it should be a really nice ride, and only probably a couple of hours in total. We'll stop a bit, maybe do a bit of dronage if we see an appropriate spot. But what a beautiful day to do it, eh? This is the perfect road for this sort of bike. Beautiful surface, some lovely elevation changes, and not particularly straight. Fabulous. Some uh, chap I was speaking to in the car park earlier, an NC 750X rider, was saying that uh, if you took a hammer to Wales and flattened it, it'd be three times the size of England, <laughs> which I thought was brilliant. As ever, the GoPro won't be showing you quite how hilly this is. But it's absolutely beautiful countryside, just how I like it. It's really hard to know when to turn the camera on or off and on on this tour because uh, everywhere you look there's just stunning views and every road is a winner as I keep saying. If you've uh, thought about coming to Wales on your bike, if, you, if you've never bothered you've always gone somewhere else then uh, definitely get down here, it's great. And the good thing if you're based in sort of the south part of England, it's pretty easy to get to. You know, when compared to going up to Scotland, which is also great. But Wales just had such great riding. Very biker friendly. Wherever you stop, there's bikers to have a chat to. All sorts of stuff. We've seen Harleys, we've seen other Goldwings, we've seen Panigales. Basically every bike going. And everybody's super friendly. Temperature's dropped a little bit now to a more manageable 26 degrees is just nice. So this is Lan Wells, I've got that pronunciation dead right. 
this is actually where uh, one of Carol's cousins lives. And we did phone or tried to contact her to tap him up for a cup of tea, but we didn't get any response. So if you're watching, be here next time we could have murdered a cup of tea. Oh well. So we've just crossed the border into uh, Carmarthenshire now. We're still on the A40 heading towards Hundovery. What an absolutely cracking ride it has been. Amazing view just before I turn the camera on as ever and now we've got a load of trees and can't see it but I'm hoping there might be a clearing up here and you could just see to my right an amazing view down the valley. 